in this lecture, I'd like to talk about contrast. So we, we, we've already talked about emphasis. And I had mentioned the, neck, the, the emphasis lecture that emphasis and contrast are, are very, very, very closely related. And they are. We use contrast to create emphasis. We use, we use emphasis to create hierarchy. So you can see everything is really related. And developing an, one principle often affects other principles. We can see that it's not a absolute formula. It's a series of adjustments. Using the principles of design are a series of adjustments that help engage and enhance the visual um, transaction uh, that we are creating with, with the viewer. Um, specifically, creating visual engagement and visual organization. Two very, very important uh, ideas and thoughts and concepts when we think about developing any uh, composition. Okay, so what is contrast? Contrast is simply differences. Okay, big and small, thick and thin, uh, tall and short, fat and thin, etc., etc. So that's we can just think of contrast as differences. Okay, um, we have different styles of, of contrast. We have um, contrast in type, and that's what this specifically is. So we have. Um, Roman type, humanist, orga or uh, organic based type. We have sans serif type. We have serif type. We have square serif, Egyptian type serif, slab serif, antique typefaces, mechanical typefaces, script typefaces, fancy typefaces, decorative display typefaces. Mixing typefaces is a great way to, to create typographic contrasts. Using contrast also increases variety. Variety is very important in visual engagement. It keeps the viewer from getting bored, so to speak. Okay, so this is, is really a great little um, like an introduction to uh, contrasts in typography. Let's jump over to um, contrasts in tone. So we have contra contrast in tone with value, uh, color values, tints, shades, and tones of that parent value. So we have a parent value. So if we can create contrast in color by using different tints, shapes, shades, and, and tones of that parent value, that parent hue, so to speak. So the value is different tints and shades. The hue is the, the parent color. Okay, so by creating variations on color using the same parent hue, we can create you guessed it, we can create contrast. We can also create contrast in texture, um, creating further visual engagement. Of course, of course, we can create contrast in color, which of course, uh, contrast in color was demonstrated in the, this week's course announcement, specifically the Apple um, iPad, iPad, iPod. Uh, the, the, remember those older uh, iPod uh, ads with the silhouette and that high contrast in color. So that's a great example of uh, contrast in color. Let's jump over to why use contrast to attract attention, using combination with emphasis, and to visual uh, create visual hierarchy plus distinction. Okay, so that should be relatively clear right now that we use contrast to to create differences, to create emphasis. Emphasis helps create hierarchy. Hierarchy helps the viewer uh, helps guide the viewer through the composition. Okay, so again, just want to, they're all related, right? Um, okay, contrasts, using uh, the visual, the, using the principle of emphasis helps you intellectually organize your information and visually and begin to visually differentiate, whereas using the principle of contrast really structures the visual difference between the visual elements. Okay, so, so um, emphasis really helps you organize the page based on information. What's the most important, second, third, etc. Whereas contrast stresses the visual difference, but the, the difference between the visual elements on the actual page. Okay, so we can look at the difference in emphasis and contrast as being one being organizational emphasis and one being visual contrasts. And that's one good way to really look at the differences between uh, emphasis and contrast, again, which are very, very closely related. I want to talk about a couple of things. We, we want to talk about grouping, alignment, and direction. So grouping, there's two, two uh, things we want to look into grouping. One is called similarity, one's called proximity. What a similarity means that anything like objects on a page should be grouped together, okay? And when we see things grouped together, our mind perceives them as being related. Okay. Conversely, if things aren't grouped together, our mind does not perceive them as being related. Um, we also, so similar elements should be grouped together. 
non-similar elements should not so 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 something that's not similar should not be in a group of other similar elements right that's that makes sense and then proximity where is it placed so if some if things are placed close together there is they are related closely related right um, a good example is the business card so and similarity we're going to group all like objects so uh, contact information is like objects right uh, so we're going to group the telephone number, the address, and the web address together in a business card, right? So in a business card, we would got, could have, possibly have the name up top, and then uh, that's one group, and then another group with the contact information, right? That's creating similarity by grouping like objects and proximity by placing uh, like objects together in a logical manner, which indicates that they are related. Alignment is important, guys. Alignment and vertical, uh, 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 horizontal and vertical alignment, and diagonal alignment, horizontal and vertical alignment. There's a, a, a basic rule in graphic design that states that every, anything on a page should be aligned with something else on a page. Okay, and that, that's not a that, that's not a, a, a be all end all principle. It's just a guideline. So everything on a page should align with something else on a page. I want to talk a little bit about alignment to center alignment. Now, guys, I'll, I'll be honest with you. A lot of young design students and new designers want to center everything. Okay, centering things is okay in specific examples. For example, a, a formal setting, a wedding invitation is great centered. Any kind of a formal invitation is great if it's centered. Very short uh, uh, um, text selections can be centered. So if you have a, an ad with one picture and one sentence of type, it can be centered. Now, you don't want to center body copy because it creates what's called symmetry and that is equal sides the negative space on each side of uh, center alignment creates symmetry and negative space symmetry and negative space is not typically the most interesting thing for the viewer to view uh, to look at so we talk about negative space and this is all left aligned which creates very interesting negative space on the right side of the composition as opposed to this all being centered where the left side and the right side create symmetry that's not the most interesting thing so think about alignment specifically centered alignment when we talk about type alignment and again the takeaway here is that everything on a page should align with something else that's a basic general rule it's not an absolute but it's something that young designers should very very much be aware of then we have direction and again that direction is the flow it's the flow of the actual ad so i'm sorry the actual composition um okay let's continue contrast by talking about balance we have i talked about formal symmetry and informal asymmetry and again that's balance now balance um it, uh, that 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 asymmetry and symmetry works in establishing expeditious negative space both with images and with typography okay so if you have four images on a page it's not always the best thing to place those images centered with formal symmetrical alignment and balance okay hope that makes sense if not let me know it's an important principle and i think one that, that really is worth uh taking a minute to, to contemplate um, unity provides uh, unity is is flow and balance. So unity based on contrast creates a good flow, a good balance of of the visual piece. Um, so when we talk about flow, we have contrast with good contrast. We have good balance. We have good flow. We have good alignment equals a clean, organized page. And we'll see as we work through weeks in the class, we're going to be adding other principles of design into this formula to ensure that we are expeditiously approaching the planning and design of our uh, visual compositions. Okay, guys, um, that's uh, what I have on contrast. Now, listen, if you have any questions at all on contrast or the relationship between um, um, excuse me, the relationship between uh, contra um, contrast and emphasis, please let me know. And if there's any questions at all regarding uh, contrast and or emphasis or other any of the other um, elements and principles covered in, in week two, please let me know. I'll be glad to make any necessary clarifications. All right, guys, thank you very much.